Hello, everybody. All right. We've got some individuals seated at the detention center. Who would that be? Any example, Your Honor? Four, four, uh, four, seven. All right. Present. Court will start with State of Kansas versus Gage Douglas April. Case number 2024 CR 341. Amber Norris appearing for the state of Kansas, Gage April appearing from the jail Zoom location. Um, Mr. Watts, I think this is your case. Of course, his name has to be April. Jim? May I? Yes, sir. Um, Judge, I don't have that file with me. I think that's. And maybe Joe's. Uh, I don't have the any insurance from him. Uh, the order the of appointment is for you. That's okay. what I was going on. It's Chris, Chris Payne. Yeah. I will get a hold of Chris and see where he's at. And see where who is? Chris. Chris Pate. Oh, I see. Okay. May I ask a question, Judge? You may. Okay, um, I'm not quite sure where this is going at what point in time, but um, for my own safety and sanity, if that's um, still of matter, um, I would have liked to have requested far beyond, far before being placed in jail, that I would have been put in some sort of a witness protection somewhere away from the state of Kansas, as I have been I've been fearful for my life for years now. And so, I mean, just to be here in front of a judge and finally have a camera and be on a court docket, I, I can't believe that it's taken this long. I've been on the Kansas missing and exploited children's list since I was in elementary school. And I'm, I have no parents. My grandparents have passed. I have no family. Okay. I'm You're an adult now, Mr. Abel. Correct. Okay. Um, and, and you say a witness protection program, that would be a program that would be essentially set up by prosecutors, not not a judge. Right. And that's usually would base, be based because you have witness information against others. So, I mean, I that's don't not make what light of what you're saying, but was, I, don't, I don't know if that's something for the state district court to be addressing here, Mr. April. What I really want to address here is the status of your current case before this court. And apparently, uh, Chris Pate was subsequently appointed after Mr. Watts was initially appointed. So there is a, a new attorney in your case. Right. I don't have a record if that's what you're if that's where we're going with that. So I may be a grown adult now, sir, but I didn't get here by happenstance. I'm a survivor. I'm six years sober. I'm not trying to collect names so that I can collect a check and skip to another state. I'm from Butler County, born, bred and raised. I'm not saying that proudly all the time. I'm That's just asking for a chance. I'm able to take your call right now. Please leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. When you have finished. And Your Honor, I don't know when the, I don't actually have a copy of the filed order appointing, um, but the one that we had for Mr. Watts um, was file stamped July 23rd. It's you know, August 12th, I'm not sure whether or not he would have gotten it in time to get it on his calendar. Like I said, I, I don't actually have a file stamp copy of the new order that appoints Mr. Pate. I was in contact with him. He knows of it. Okay, so there, have, has there been a formal order appointing Mr. Pate? Yes. Okay. It could be in the electronic filing system somewhere. Hmm. All right. Um, I hate to attempt to try to schedule any preliminary hearings without defense counsel's calendar being involved, but that is one essential purpose of this docket. If it's if the case isn't in a position for prelim waiver, which certainly the court wouldn't be comfortable with, then an evidentiary preliminary hearing needs to be set. Any 
Your Honor, if we could push this one maybe to the heel of the docket, and maybe we can get Mr. Pate in. I don't really want to calendar it and then do subpoenas, and then we would have to call those subpoenas off because the day doesn't work with Mr. Pate's okay. calendar. I am going to have you rejoin with video, though, Ms. Norris. You're going to address the court very well. I, I tend to agree with your position, though, Ms. Norris. Uh, Mr. April, we're going to recall your case later in this docket. It's a long one today. So we'll we'll call you back in a little while and we'll deal with your case again. OK, yeah. um, and then before before I go, may I just I, if if I'm able to like survive and live another life, I don't want to die of a stroke in jail. Like I, I really am so unfortunate that this is a reality and if i could wave a magic wand i would redo it all so just i beg of everyone that can hear me please give me a chance that's all i have to say so noted mr april we'll call you later in the docket thank you judge judge he is joining right now he what chris well, Pate is joining okay can we bring mr april back Did you get my message, Mandy? I hope you did. No, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, I got stuck in a hearing with Judge Webster that ran long. Oh, okay. I see it now. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Uh, Mr. Pate, uh, we're here on this Gage Douglas April case, and we're trying to determine the status of preliminary hearing. Is there any announcement that you're ready to make at this time? Your Honor, as I'm sure the court's aware, I was just appointed last week. I've not received discovery nor had time to get out to the jail to see uh, Mr. Apple. I would request either a new PHC setting or a preliminary hearing that's out a couple of months to allow me adequate time, given the serious nature of the charges. And because of the serious nature of the charges facing this defendant, I want to get an evidentiary hearing set on the calendar without any further delay. Uh, Council, I'm currently looking at Monday, September 30. Quite a ways out, Mr. Pate, it's at least six weeks. Monday, September 30 in the morning hours. Um, it, is this in person or Zoom? Uh, does the state take a position on that? I do not, Your Honor. And I, I'm available either way. I'm not available in the afternoon, but I would be available the entire morning. This is going to be an extended hearing on a Monday morning on top of the rather large misdemeanor control docket conducted at that time. Uh, the court's going to uh, set this as an in-person proceeding. Courtroom B, Draper will need to be transported to courtroom B by court security. So it'll be an in-person proceeding starting 9 o'clock a.m. Monday, September the 30th. I'm going to go ahead and mark out the entire morning for this. I don't know how many witnesses will need to be called. Monday, September 30, 9 a.m. for a preliminary hearing in this case. That is obviously an evidentiary setting in person. With that established, Mr. Payne, anything else we need to address currently on him? Not at this time. Just Mr. April, I'll be out to see you before that date at the jail. Right, Ms. Norris, anything further on the ABLE case? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, the ABLE case is currently in recess. We'll move on to another matter. Okay, is Elizabeth Albright on this meeting? And again, that was shown on my sheet as uh, Mr. Watts' case. That file, there it is. Do we have Elizabeth? Elizabeth Albright herself on this meeting. Your Honor, she was in custody at the last hearing on eight uh, seven, and according to, but according to the jail sheet this morning, she is no longer in our jail. No, there was a substantial bond modification made by this court to allow her to be back in the community, with the understanding that she would be appearing for this docket. And Your Honor, I don't know if. It doesn't appear since security has not spoken up that she is present with either security one or two, but she's not in our jail's custody. Mr. Kofel. She's not here. All right. She's not here. This time the court will uh, order bond forfeiture bench warrant, no bond hold and for Elizabeth Albright due to her non-appearance. Jim on. 
I show his box. I'm, I'm, I'm here, Your Honor. Are you appointed, Jim? On I am, and I will tell the court. I went out to the jail on the 8th, would have been Thursday last week, and uh, learned that she had bonded out at that time. I've not heard from her since that time. All right. The order stands. Bond for your bench warrant, no bond hold on Elizabeth Albright. We'll move on to another case. There's an individual seated at the Butler County Detention Center Zoom location. Who is that individual? You can tell me. Mr. Phil Meyer, Your Honor. All right. I have, that's Josh Andrews' case. Is he on this meeting with us? I haven't seen him yet, Your Honor. Mr. Fulmar has about, I think, three cases. He does. Recall that. I don't know where Mr. Andrews is. Mandy, did he contact you about being late? His office was just trying to call. Let me give them a call back. All right. Let me know. Fellmeyer, uh, we, we need to wait on your attorney to join this meeting, so we won't be taking up your cases right now. We will later. Yes, Your Honor. Do you have anyone else out there at the jail that's on this docket? Yes, we had, uh, I believe, four more. Okay. If we can bring the next one on the sheet. I think that on mine is going to be Brandon Garrett. Yes. That's next on mine as well. Right, Your Honor. It appears I have everybody here now. Uh, any specific order you'd like to see them? Who do you have lined up next to? Fieldmeyer? I have Fieldmeyer, Your Honor. All right. Let's deal with him. There are three cases currently before the court, all involving State of Kansas versus Dylan Michael Fellmeyer. Mr. Fellmeyer appears from the jail Zoom location. Amber Norris for the state. James Watts is defense counsel. These are, respectively, case numbers 22 CR 462, 22 CR 460, 22 CR 490. I'm sorry, Your Honor, just one correction to the record. I, actually, I believe I'm the uh, attorney of record for Mr. Fillmar. So noted, Mr. Andrews. All right, what, what announcement would you make at this time regarding these pending cases with their storied history? Well, Mr. Your Andrews. Honor, uh, I don't have a good answer to that question. Uh, as, as the court noted, this does have a uh, long history. Um, I was uh, previously appointed to represent Mr. Fellmeyer on these cases. Um, then Mr. Fellmeyer did retain private counsel. It was my understanding that a, a global plea agreement had been negotiated and uh, that would resolve these three cases as well as a number of other cases currently pending in front of different judges um, within the Butler County Judicial District. Um, that that plea agreement did not go through um, but I'm not sure if that was that ag uh, agreement was withdrawn or if there was a, uh, other reasons it didn't go through. Um, either way, Mr. Rapp, the privately retained attorney, uh, did withdraw, and I was reappointed to this case. Um, I had the opportunity to briefly visit with Mr. Fellmeyer on Friday during a, another hearing, uh, but I've not been able to go out to the jail to visit with him in, in depth regarding. Um, the current status of, of all of his matters and, and how he wants to proceed with it. Um, I have uh, time on my calendar to go visit with him a week from tomorrow uh, in the morning, um, at, at which time I'm, I'm hopefully going to be able to, to get a strategy that resolves all of these cases, um, including these three. Uh, but as we say here today, I, I frankly just, having just been appointed, don't, um, reappointed rather, I don't have a, an answer as far as what the next step is with regard to those cases, whether it is still going to be resolved through a uh, global plea agreement um, or whether it will right. not be. Do you know the terms of the supposedly comprehensive plea agreement that was negotiated by John Rapp, the former attorney? I do not, Your Honor. I, I, I may have buried in my notes from, from the beginning of this year um, something indicating what the that global plea agreement looked like, but as far as what the final um, agreement was that was supposed to be entered into on the city date, I don't have that. Uh, Ms. Norris, the court is going to order the, the Butler County Attorney's Office to turn over whatever communication took place between your office and John Rapp. Now, I'm not saying that you're still bound by that offer, Ms. Norris. I'm simply saying that I'm going to 
order it be turned over to Mr. Andrews so that he is at least aware of what a comprehensive plea offer was on the table and apparently earlier accepted by your office. Uh, obviously, Mr. Fellmeyer's uh, total failure to appear in court to address these matters, what effect that might have on it. But I am going to order that if there was an email communication or a letter that documented this plea agreement, whether initiated by John Rapp or initiated by your office or both, then I want that turned over to Mr. Andrews within the next week. Is there any reason that you can think of that that couldn't happen, Ms. Norris? Your Honor, Mr. Fieldmeyer's cases are not mine. Um, I assume that that's probably something that can be accomplished, but I am not the attorney that worked uh, those deals. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Sweeney, um, but I I'll be sure to pass the note along. But that, so I would say that it's it's possible, but I I make no promise that it will be done in one week, just based on scheduling and whatnot. But we will sure try and get that done. We're just talking about forwarding of a of a plea agreement communication that's that's all i'm asking you and and your honor i i assume that it can be done i i just don't really i don't know how they communicated if they did it by phone or if they did it by email or if there's actually a written agreement um so um hopefully that should not be too difficult but again i i'm sure that mr sweeney can manage it and i will pass that along but i just don't want to make it in the court any promises that we can't follow through on yeah you are not making any such assurance Ms. norris and i understand where you're coming from Mr. Sweeney, though, uh, will need to communicate with this court, of course, with any copy of that communication to Mr. Andrews if he can't do it. Yes, Your Honor, of course. And I'll work with Mr. Sweeney and Mr. Andrews in that regard. All right, we need to reset Fellmeyer at least for control purposes to keep this active on the calendar. And Your Honor, uh, like I said, these, these are not my cases, but the three cases that are on today, um, are all misdemeanors from what I can see. And I was just a little surprised they're actually on the court's docket. That's because I won't give them up. Oh, okay. There's and there, there are, let's see, we had a probation violation case on him and on, on Friday in front of uh, Judge Hart. And yeah, then he has four cases that are in front of Judge Webster um, on the 26th. And then he's got one case in front of Judge Crum on the 19th. Okay, I can set this Friday, August the 30th at three o'clock. That works for me, Your Honor. That was 9 a.m., Your Honor. No, no, that's three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm sorry. So Friday, August 30th, three o'clock by Zoom. We'll readdress the, the cases currently before this court and uh, review the case's status at that time. August 30, three o'clock p.m. If there's nothing further regarding Mr. Fellmeyer's cases, we will move on to other matters on the docket. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Thank Excuse you, me, Honor. Mr. Andrews. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, you're welcome. You're released from the meeting if you don't have any other cases, Josh. I, I don't believe I do, so I will leave the meeting. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Watts, you had assured the court earlier that you thought this case, the, these, this docket would move smoothly and quickly. So far, your assurances have not been not so borne out by actual practice. Yeah, not so far. Thanks for being here. Be safe, be well, sleep sweet, and much love.